enemy understands the power of your voice better than you understand the power of your voice. The enemy understands the power of your voice when it is unlocked, that you can lock him down. Come on. And that you can unlock the kingdoms and the riches of the glory of Jesus Christ. You hear me now? Even in our children, even in our teenagers, even in our young adults, come on somebody. And even in us that are old, in between and older, you understand we can never stop raising our vocalization and our sound. And it's not just about being loud, even though that's important. And it's not just about this and about that. It is literally a spiritual principle that the devil doesn't want you to get a hold of. Come on now. Don't you shut your children down when they start trying to pray. Don't you shut your children down when they start trying to prophesy. They may not have it all right. They may not have it all in a line. They might not sound all that great yet, but you understand God is grooming something in them. You let them exercise that gift that God has put down in every, every single one of his sons and his daughters. Because one day, this people planet is going to need that voice. When your voice and my voice is long gone, it's going to need their voice. What then will this child turn out to be? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. I'm almost done. This child will be a voice. This child would be known for the very thing that had been taken from his father because of doubt and antagonism and unbelief, his voice. Never underestimate church, the power, revival church, the power of your obedience. You do not know what you're hindering by refusing the protocol of the Lord. As we're saying again, you don't know what you're hindering by refusing the protocol of the Lord. You don't know what you're hindering by refusing the protocol of the Lord. You don't know what's staying on lockdown just because your pride makes you refuse the protocol of the Lord. Look, I'm over it. I'm over religion. I'm going to tell you all a story that I told the last few places I preach, and it's kind of it's kind of a new story, so I'm going to tell it. So it's like before I was a preacher, I was a praise and worship leader for many years, 25 years, 18 of them here at this church. And I would stand up there, obviously much younger, in those years years and it was like it was like an intimidation like kind of this like like back at you kind of thing because you'd have these religious religious idiots out there and they would just be standing there they're religious idiots they're just standing there and they're just like you know just make me worship just make me shout you know just just would you just hurry up and get through this it's too loud you know it's uh, can you turn it down it's I don't like that song you know all this kind of and you get all kinds of comments and all kinds of ridiculous stuff that people come up to you and say it's just ridiculous it's a spirit of religion and it makes me mad, so I'm going to make it mad right now. And so I'm looking out there, and it's like you're looking and you're staring at that kind of stuff, especially as you're younger. And it's like, it's, it's, you know, and especially as you're younger, and it's like, you know, I guess I don't know enough. I guess I don't, you don't know no Bible yet. I haven't prayed enough today. I didn't do this, you know. And then finally one day I crossed the threshold. Come on, somebody. I crossed the threshold. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not the one that doesn't know enough. You, sir, are the one who doesn't know enough. I'm not the one who needs to pray more. You, ma'am, are the one that needs to pray more. It is not my job to sing your favorite song, to have the, the volume level that is comfortable for your flesh and all the other things that you want me to placate to. I am not here to entertain you and make you feel good. I'm here to provoke you and unlock your voice. So I say to all the praise and worship leaders out there, cross the threshold. I tell you, you're going you're gonna to refuse the protocol of the Lord one day too many. And then the point of no return. Point of no return. So perhaps the reason revival tarries for you, my friend, is because you're mute. Come on. In the natural and the spirit. Perhaps it's because you've chosen to doubt 
And the result is you've lost your voice. Perhaps it's because you've chosen normal protocol and it's silencing the voice of the revival. Perhaps revival tarries for regions around this nation, pastor, and your church and your city, simply because of the same things that I just mentioned. You, your, your antagonism steals your voice and your choices of normal protocol steals the voice and any other name but John. Come on, somebody. Any other name but John. You're trying to name it all other kinds of things. But the Lord says his name is John. The name is John. The name is voice. Come on. The name is call. The name is cry out. The name is raise your voice like a trumpet and don't relent. Sound waves. Sound waves. Sound waves. Until the particles lose energy. Come on, somebody. If Zechariah had not been obedient, even in that last moment, he would have silenced a voice that carried the single most important assignment yet in the Bible to prepare the way of the Lord. And this is what I close with. Part of the vital assignment of this revival is to prepare the way of the Lord. There is a sound that emanates from this house. I'm not going to read my quote again, but it literally causes hell. It literally unlocks heaven. This is not a statement of arrogance. It is a statement of fact. I stand up here on assignment today. I have nothing to prove, nothing to prove, nothing to prove. I'm here to equip us today. We must understand you've, 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 you've made the choice to be a part of this church. Come on. We're not just trying to grow a church around here. If we just wanted to grow a church, we'd be doing things a lot different right now. But there would be no Holy Ghost. There would be no oil. There would be no changed lives. Come on, somebody. You might sign a card, but there wouldn't be any changed lives. Come on. I want to sign it today. His single most important assignment was to prepare the way of the Lord. To open and break open the way for Jesus to have access in to the earthly realm. Now, Jesus was already born, but he needed access. So John came as a voice crying, splitting the way open. He spoke to mountains and obstacles, and they leveled. He spoke to valleys, to low spiritual places, and brought them up. Come on, somebody. He spoke to obstacles of sin and sickness and Satan, and they were cleared out of the way. I'm going to say it again, because this is an assignment of the sound of this house. Hear me now. He spoke to mountains, obstacles, and they were leveled. This is John, John the voice. He spoke to low spiritual places, and he said, what are you all doing down here? And he brought the valleys up. He spoke to obstacles of sin, of hypocrisy, come on somebody, of religion, and he spoke to sickness, and he spoke to Satan even himself, and cleared it out of the way. And the day came when Jesus came walking to be baptized by God of Hashem by John and he said look behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world the voice had accomplished its assignment oh, look there he is behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world and now everything is making sense in the minds of John and in Zechariah and Elizabeth now we know why the devil wanted to fight John the voice for so long because of this moment behold there he is and John high fives Jesus Passes the baton. He said, take over. Take over. He said, take over. And that, my friends, is what Jesus did. And that, my friends, revival voices, is what he still wants to do. But he must have voices of revival.